welcome to the Compulsive Survival Builder. Today we're going to ask the question, how do I mod my Fallout 4 game on PS4? Well, that's a big question, and it requires a big answer. So let's start off with some things you need to know. PS4 has issues processing its RAM, and as a result, it needs a reset and a rebuild between certain steps. This process is pretty straightforward, and will always be the same every time it's mentioned from this point on. To reset and rebuild your PS4, first you need to power it off completely and wait until the light on the front of the unit stops flashing. Now you need to unplug the unit from the wall or from the back of the console and let it sit for 2-5 to five minutes. Now plug the system back in and plug your controller directly into the front of your console using your charging cable. Press and hold the power button until it beeps for a second time. This will boot it into safe mode. Press the PS button on the controller still plugged into the console and scroll down to option 5, rebuild your database. This process always says it could take several hours, but I've never had it last more than a couple minutes. You can unplug your controller while it processes. When it's finished, you'll be on your login screen again. Power off your system again, either by turning on your controller and selecting the option, or by holding the power button until it beeps a second time. Unplug it again for 2-5 to five minutes. Once you plug it back in and turn it on, this process is complete. It takes a few minutes each time, but it is well worth the effort to get a clean install of the game and all of your mods. If you're planning on installing a full list of mods, you should delete your game, reset and rebuild your system, download a fresh reinstall of the game, and any DLC content you have, and then reset and rebuild your system again. PlayStation is the most limited platform when it comes to mods, but there are still plenty of very fun and interesting ones to make your experience what you want it to be. Just keep in mind when looking for mods that if it's not already somewhere in the game, then it probably can't be done on PS4. Due to Sony restrictions, PS4 modders have to use scripts that are already included in the game. They aren't able to write new ones or add new textures, so don't go looking for anything that can't be crafted from what's already there. This may sound discouraging, but in reality, the ingenuity of the modding community has really come to shine in PlayStation mods, and mod authors are still finding creative workarounds to accomplish their goals to this day, including significant gameplay and environmental changes, astounding weather mods, and extensive AI overhauls. Creation Club content shouldn't be downloaded before getting your Pip-Boy. We'll touch on that later on. As a side note, Creation Club skins are not recommended on the PS4. They are a known trigger for the dreaded zero kilobyte save error. Yes, that's still a thing in 2021. While this process can certainly be done in only a few hours, picking your mod list and designing your load order is a somewhat intricate process, and it should be allotted its due time and care. If it's your first time modding your game, take your time and prepare the best you can before you dive into installations and enabling mods in your game. In the long run, you'll be happy that your game is working the way you want it to, rather than getting to play it sooner than you were ready for. If you have concerns about your list prior to installation, check a forum or ask a question. You'd be surprised how helpful the community will be if you just ask. There are mod forums on the Bethesda website as well as Reddit and Facebook. The community is large, and while opinions on procedures vary, you can definitely find the help if you seek it out. Now, keeping all of that in mind, here are the step-by-step -step instructions for loading mods into your game. If you haven't already, register a Bethesda account. You can either do this on their website or through the game itself by simply clicking the mods option and choosing to set up a quick login. The quick account uses your PlayStation login info. Now, when selecting your mods, you'll probably want to be on a desktop or laptop computer. The desktop website is much easier to search and navigate, and has important information that's not visible through your PS4 mod menu, like the mod category and the comments section, which can be helpful to find out if anyone is experiencing issues with a mod, or conflicts or issues the mod author may not have been aware of. Choose the mods you want by clicking the heart icon on them through the Bethesda website. This will add them to your favorites menu when you log in through your game console. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend downloading mods that don't have at least a few hundred endorsements. Once you get comfortable with troubleshooting your mod list, then you can start diving into experimental territory. Until then, stick to the stuff you can be at least pretty sure won't mess up your game. If you're not sure what exactly a mod does, or how it differs from a similar mod, look for it on YouTube. There are literally thousands of mod reviews for you to peruse, and most of them showcase them pretty thoroughly, and even tell you what to expect for glitches or limitations. 
Be aware, however, that on PS4 you are limited to 100 total mods and 900 megabytes of total space used by mods. Although given the texture and script limitations on PS4, you will likely reach 100 mods long before 900 megabytes. Write down the order of the mods you have chosen by looking at the category codes on the mods and comparing them to a framework of some kind. I use Odd Little Turtles Fallout 4 Load Order Framework, a Vault Dweller's Load Order Survival Guide. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. I trust this document because it was written and vetted by elite modders and still has a changelog to this day of updates. It also lists tons of examples of mods and where they would land in the framework in case you're not exactly sure where to place something. This is an incredibly informative document and it's where I learned the bulk of the information that I know. I would recommend that you study it extensively if you intend to mod your game extensively. According to the survival guide, this is the order in which you should put your mod list. Master files, fast starts and frameworks, faction and AI overhauls, new world spaces, land masses and quests, new factions, bug fixes and unofficial patches, settlement building mods that add items to the menu in the vanilla way, starting with powered objects, workshop assignable objects, and finally, decorations. Next is settlement building mods that inject menus through scripts or mods with advanced scripting. And then, settlement building mods that overhaul your menu or make changes to the menu. Gameplay changes and tweaks, new companion mods, NPC and companion changes, radio and audio mods, visual, atmospheric, and textural improvements, textures, which aren't available on PS4, Lighting changes, vanilla settlement changes and tweaks, sorting and menu changes, HUD related mods, character model replacers or player character enhancements, pit boy and map mods, weapons, armor, and clothing, etc., that are non craftable, crafting, crafting new wearable items, crafting robot workbench items, crafting power armor, crafting new workbenches. This is an important one. Crafting new armor and weapons at the chemistry bench. A lot of mods use the chemistry bench because it's easy to mod for, but they can be tricky. Crafting armor and weapon AWKCR mods. AWKCR is a prerequisite for a lot of weapon and armor mods. Crafting workbench and new recipe mods. New settlements and other building changes and tweaks. New player homes. Quests and collectibles. Weapon and armor modifications landscape and grass, scrapping mods, any mod that says specifically it is to be put at the bottom of the load order, as well as finicky mods. And finally, gameplay overhauls. It's also a good idea to read the mod author's notes about load order, if there are any, and use their advice above all else. After all, they know the mod they wrote and how it works better than anyone. Often mod authors will also list known conflicts and troubleshooting steps in their descriptions, so it's always a good idea to read everything when choosing your mods. If you are modifying one feature multiple times, the lowest mod in the framework will win. Sometimes mods only change part of a feature, and sometimes they overwrite just about everything, which can undo changes made by previous mods in your load order. Use trial and error to tweak your list, but in the end, you may have to choose one or the other if some of your mods conflict with each other. That's just the nature of the beast, I'm afraid. Once you have your load order, start up your game on your PS4, after a reset and rebuild, and go to the mods section on the main menu to log into your Bethesda account. This should happen automatically, but it often errors out. Just try again until it loads, or wait a while if it errors persistently. The easiest way to install at this point is to go to your favorites list and download the mods in the order you previously worked out. If you do it this way, you won't have to do as much tweaking after the fact, although something will likely need adjusted at some point. Download each one and disable it immediately before exiting the mods download page. When you're finished downloading, go to your mods list and verify everything is disabled and in the correct load order, at least to the best of your knowledge. Some mods will snap to a specific spot in your load order. If this is the case, and you find that you can't move a mod, leave it alone. It knows where it's supposed to go. Back out and say OK when you're prompted about your game files being reloaded. Close the game and reset and rebuild your system once more. Start your game back up and go back to the mod menu. Very few mods are designed to be enabled before character creation, but those should be enabled now. 
usually the unofficial Fallout 4 patch, any extensive gameplay overhauls, and anything that needs edited in Vault 111 at the beginning of the game. Sometimes these need to be enabled now, sometimes they don't. Play through your character creation and the opening sequence until you wake up in the cryo chamber. Your game will autosave here, even in survival mode. Back out to the main menu and go back to your mods list. Enable all the mods that don't have to do with immediately adding items to your inventory, workbenches and settlement building, especially the chemistry bench, creation club alterations or patches. Load up your save file and play until you get your pit boy and open the vault. Your game will also autosave here, although this save can be a little sketchy. If you're playing in survival mode, you may want to wait and go find a bed to sleep in. Otherwise, hard save now. Now that you have your Pip-Boy, you'll want to completely close out your game and reset, rebuild in preparation to download your Creation Club content. If you don't have any Creation Club content and you're not interested in purchasing any, you can simply back out to the game menu once again. We'll catch up to you later. Installing Creation Club content is super simple. There's even a page of everything you already own. Once again, skins of any kind are not recommended, but if you just have to have your favorite skin, only download one for each install and playthrough you do. Skins are infamous for triggering the 0kb glitch, although they are not the only trigger for it. Anything you buy will immediately download and install. Anything you already own has to be selected for installation. If you install Creation Club content, then close your game and reset and rebuild your system again, and start your game back up to the main menu. For those of you that skipped Creation Club content, welcome back. Once again, go to the Mods section and your load order. Now you can enable mods that add items to your inventory. You should wait until you leave the vault to add any mods that change Creation Club content, as that content doesn't actually load into the game until then, and it won't be loaded until you start your save again, even if you've already exited the vault before this last save. Either way, save those for later. Start your game up and head out of the vault and on to Sanctuary Hills. Access the workshop at Sanctuary Hills and any of the workbenches that you downloaded mods for, although I'd recommend just opening all of them since they're all here. You just have to open and close them. Now save your game by either hard saving in the main menu or sleeping in survival mode and back out to the main menu. Access the mods section and your load order and enable all the rest of your mods except chemistry bench modifications and anything you don't want to take effect until later. Load up your save and check the workshop menu and any of the benches you altered to make sure the changes you made appear to have been successful. Save and exit. Now, one at a time, enable a chem bench mod, load your save, test build an item from that mod, and attempt to save. If everything goes good, rinse and repeat, loading your newest save between each chem bench mod you enable. If at any point you get the 0kb error, you must immediately exit your game. Delete the save file that it created, even though it said you couldn't save. Copy your previous saves to a USB or the cloud. Delete your entire Fallout 4 save folder and any screen captures or videos you may have taken. They can also be copied to your USB or the cloud first, if you like. Reset and rebuild your PS4, start your game, adjust your settings if necessary, and probably delete the mod that caused the error. Back out, copy your saves back into the new folder. Start the game back up, load up the previous save, and immediately try to save again to make sure that it's gone. If not, I'm sorry, but you need to reinstall and start over, probably without the mod that caused the problem. This is always the procedure if you run into this error, and it will often necessitate a reordering or deletion of the mod that caused it. Check the channel page for more thorough explanations of how to combat the 0kb issue, and remember, we're all in this together. Once you're finished, close out, reset and rebuild your system one more time for good measure, and you should be good to go. Just pick up the game at your last save with all of your mods loaded, and go hit the wasteland. Now that's everything you need to know, and that answers your question. But here's some things to keep in mind. 0kb can pop up at any time, and diagnosing what caused it can be a real pain. So it's recommended that you periodically unplug your PS4 to clear the catch, especially after marathon playthroughs or in-depth building sessions. A good rule I live by is when I come home, drop off all my stuff, and ask myself, what do I want to do next? I save it, close out, unplug it for a few minutes while I get something to eat or go to the bathroom. 
Regular maintenance of your RAM is essential for keeping your game running smoothly on PS4, even without mods. Save often, especially at the beginning. It will be easier to identify a mod that is causing 0kb if you diagnose it immediately. Losing sound effects, specifically gun sounds, is a red flag symptom. You should also check your save whenever you use the chemistry bench, as it is known to trigger it as well. Usually moving the mod you're trying to use to the bottom of your chem bench mod section will fix this issue, but not always. Your mods list in your load order is like a garden. It takes tending and sometimes weeding out problems to keep it running well. Sometimes conflicts won't appear until much later in the game. Don't be discouraged if you end up having to make changes. You can add and remove mods from your load order at any time, but they will run the best if you only add them on a fresh install. You should reset and rebuild your system prior to downloading and enabling new mods. Make sure to read the mod description for any special instructions on uninstalling a mod prior to just deleting it. If something works for you, and you like how the game plays, then there's nothing wrong with doing things your way. Don't let yourself get bullied by people who think their way is the only way. It's your game, make it yours and don't feel bad about it. Finally, know this. You're likely to experience a myriad of complications on your first go around, especially if you reach or come close to your mod cap on your first try. Crashes, AI glitches, texture breaks, and general nonsense is something you should be ready for after your initial install. Don't let it discourage you. This is a learning experience for everyone. Take your time and try to understand what may be causing your issue and make changes to your list appropriately. If you get it running the way you want it, you're a success. And once you have a working load order, you can always install it again and maybe get it running perfect. Now, if you're still watching, then I've already got half of what I need from you, and that's watch time. The other thing I need is for you to hit that like button. I'll bet you didn't know that's how it works, did you? The YouTube algorithm is dependent on those two things in order to share this video with the most people. So, if you think this video was informative and that it should be shared with the most people who want to find out how to mod on their PlayStation, then definitely hit that like button. You can also consider subscribing to the channel. I do have a much more extensive walkthrough series on modding on the PS4 where I even troubleshoot my own load order. And I always try to generate content that's as informative and interesting as this. If you hit the bell icon, then you'll get notified whenever I upload. Otherwise, stay safe out there, Wastelanders. study your Vault Tech provided materials to prepare for survival. And to answer the question, do you know what makes you special?